Hello, and welcome to a very special episode of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. This is episode 130, and today we're speaking with Sensei Fumio Demura. At Whistlekick, we make the world's best sparring gear, and here on Martial Arts Radio, we bring you the web's best podcast on the traditional martial arts twice a week. Welcome. My name's Jeremy Lesniak, and I'm the host and founder of Whistlekick Sparring Gear and Apparel. Thank you to the returning listeners, and welcome to those of you checking us out for the first time. If you'd like to see more about our products, you can do so at whistlekick.com. This episode is different from any that we've done. Demara Sensei is a private man, and his health isn't great. People that know him told me that this interview would never happen. It was only because of our profile of Sensei on episode 107 that this was even a possibility. The folks that produced The Real Miyagi, the documentary of Sensei's life, were kind enough to reach out to us and ultimately introduced me to Sensei. This is the first episode we've released that's been entirely uncut. What follows is more than 30 minutes of stories and advice from Sensei. And within this episode, likely every bit of advice a martial artist could ever need. After all, who better to advise a martial artist than one of the greatest that has ever lived? Hello. Hello, Demara Sensei. Hi. Hi, this is Jeremy Lesniak. How are you, sir? Okay. Is now still an okay time for us to chat? Yeah. Oh, good. How are you doing today? All right. I just finished the diet. Yeah. How's how's that going? I love that thirteen hours every day. That's tough. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Is it painful? Huh? Is it painful? No, not that too much. They just just sit down too long. Mm. <laughs> I'm sure there are many other things you would rather do. Yeah. But there there are there are many of us that are happy that you're doing it so you can keep doing the thing that we all appreciate yeah. that you do. Yeah, I just uh, two days I was uh, in the breakfast magazine. Uh I just made a uh uh video for Kobodo. Yeah. I think it's great that they still have you doing things. I mean that that's how Yeah, well, I, I spend my best, yeah. Yeah. Keep, keep busy in my mind. Sure. What What's the video that you're working on now? Is it on Sai or Nunchaku? Uh, or? No, traditional kata for all weapons. For all? Okay. Wow, that's... Uh... Yeah, Sai, Ekbo, Bo, Kama, Tongfa, and uh, Nunchaku don't have any kata, so I made a kata that put me in there. Oh, okay. How many kata in total? Uh, 30. Wow. That's going to be it. And all on all on one video? I don't know. That's okay. their, their business, so I oh, okay. have no idea. Okay. it's a lot of work. Well, um, I don't know how much time you have. I wasn't sure if now would be a good time for me to ask you some questions or if you just wanted for us to chat for a little bit and then we could set up no, another that, time. Yeah, um, I can do much that I can. Okay. Okay. Um, so our show, we have on uh, a lot of different people, a lot of martial artists. Bill Wallace has come on, uh, Dave Kovar, you know, I'm sure a lot of people that, that you've known and certainly a lot of people that um, respect you and learned from you. So I think a lot of people are going to be interested in your answers to some of these questions. We ask all of our guests the same questions. Okay. Yeah, um, just go ask me any questions. Okay. So I've read a little bit about why you started martial arts, and of course uh, I, I've seen The Real Miyagi. Um, but when you started martial arts, when you, when you were young, what did you think of getting to start martial arts? Was it something you were excited about? Was it something you were nervous about? Well, see, and I, I started from right after World War Two, just the end of the war. Mm -hmm. So we don't have any, no shoes, no clothes, no food, nothing. Of course, no toy. Right. So I had nothing to do. So then one of my neighbors have a, is a, a kendo master. So I said that I started, and actually not kendo, we call it chambara. It's like a 
just cut the wood, made a sole, and we had to fight. So I had to make an own sole, and then I go to that, he's na- my neighbor, and he showed me how to do it, how to study. Then uh, after that, I went to uh, my hometown, I have a kindled, uh, opened a dojo. So I went over there. They were teaching karate. And I was a long time ago, I read a book about the karate. So I'm interested in karate, but uh, instructor said, no, you're too young. So I can get in here. But I was watching every night. He said, uh, are you interested in karate? I said, yeah. Okay, coming in. That's why I was in here. That's the story. Then I have uh, my friend, in that th- he said the same time. And he was uh, ahead of me. So I for him. I don't want to lose it. So I continue. If he come in, 2 o'clock, I go to one thirty. He read 10 o'clock. I leave 10 after uh, 10 and a half an hour later. I leave. I never stay with it, back up him. Then since I start doing that, then the 1958, I think I see the first uh, 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 karate tournament at the uh, JKA, the Permont. Mm-hmm. I was watching Mr. Kanazawa and then Mr. Mikami was the final. I was watching, so excited. That's it. That's I got to do it. So I started that part. Then continue, continue. In 1961, uh, uh, first all Japan combined together, uh, they had a tournament. Shodokan, Goju, Wado. I story you all guys together. Then in 1961, I got the first place. Hmm. That changed my life. I want to be more martial art uh, to do that. Then, and uh, I had a problem with my instructor. Because I tried to teach him. He said, no, you can't teach this. So you have to do this way, this way. So I decided I got to go to some other country. I proved myself. Then uh, I meet uh, one at uh, that time, uh, my uh, friend and my uh, martial art uh, friend, and uh, uh, he's a well-known and a Japan-American guy, Dan Dreger. Then yeah. uh, he introduced me to Dan Ivan, and he wanted to study. So I started teaching him. Then at uh, end of the uh, uh, section, and he got to go back to America. So I said, are you interested in going to come to America? I said, uh, yes, I do. So then a uh, few months later, I right after the Tokyo Olympics, 1964, and uh, I said, come to the America. So I said, okay. I just put it together. I came to the United States, 1965. Then I stayed in the garage, and uh, that time, karate, nobody knows. They call it judo chop. So anyway, and uh, we started, 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 and I took the demonstration for uh, Kobudo, but nobody understands what Kobudo is. Mm. Then I started from there, I keep going, research different people, different way, and then I, people talking about about what karate is. So I just create, 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 and then I get a big name. Then uh, uh, that year, I went to uh, Edward Parker's uh, international tournament and meet uh, 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 Bruce Lee's demonstration for One Inch Punch. And uh, uh, Mike Song was at that time, I think, first place. Then I meet uh, Mike, and uh, they came to my carpet club, and uh, this, I started teaching him. And they made a good friend. That's why I keep going, 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 going. Yeah. That happened today. <laughs> You've certainly had the opportunity to work with, I mean, so many wonderful people. And you just mentioned some of the biggest names that have ever been in, in martial arts. Yeah. Yeah. I am really lucky. Yeah. It, it uh, I mean, it's, it, 
clearly you're very humble, you say lucky, and there are so many of us that look at what you have done and see so much hard work and, and so much dedication to the martial arts. And uh, it, it's incredible. And you're, it's a very inspiring story that you, you've just told and one that uh, I hope all of our listeners really appreciate. When you think about, uh, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, it's okay. When you think about your time in the martial arts, your life as a martial artist, is there one particular memory that stands out as being um, the most exciting or um, the the best story? We ask we we ask our guests to tell stories on this show. Uh -huh. Is there a, a a great story from your time that you would like to share? Well, I think uh, I showed that in my documentary film. Mm -hmm. I was doing a Japanese village. I did a karate demonstration, but. People no react, no reaction, because they don't understand what karate is. So I decide somebody, I punch somebody when you hit. That before that, and uh, years ago, they punch them, they stop. Why won't you before the hit? So the guy doesn't move. But this way, look like a hit. Guy moves the head. And I punch the stomach, bend the body. And then I go to this way and hit the elbow, it fly over the side. Like a, a real fighting scene. That's why I started doing that. And the Japanese village was the top show at that time. But Japan, I they hear about that doing for karate for show. So they have a different kind of mind martial arts people over there, over here. So I already am more Americanized, so that's why I want to do it. I just did it. But I got a problem with Japan, pressure, pressure, pressure. Mm. And I tried to quit. But my mother said, if he's something doing wrong, you can quit. But if he doesn't do anything wrong, just to do it. And I said, I don't do anything wrong. I guess a different way I teach the public. And then... That means they are jealous of you. They don't know anything about it. Just keep doing. So I said, okay, I do it. And I did that 1974, I think. Uh, third uh, World Championships. Uh, all the people come back from Japan. All top masters came over. And uh, including my sensei. And uh, that time, uh, I put... Uh, Silver gi, not the white gi, silver gi, and uh, mijukon, and uh, I did demonstration. And that time, oh, I can't put the mijukon, I cannot wear silver gi. <laughs> but uh, Madame Ivan said, just do it, show it to the people. So Japan, Japanese sensei is about 1%. Other 99% is uh, all outside the country of the world. So they have different minds. So I did it. And I got standing operation. Yeah. That's why it saved my neck. <laughs> Today, doesn't matter where you go, even in Japan, they, every place you go, they do what I did 40, 50 years ago. Same demonstration, they do. They're better than I do right now, but they can do the same way. So that's my and I proud I did it myself. Yeah. And there are a lot of people that would say that if you hadn't done your demonstrations the way that you did, martial arts wouldn't be as big today. How do you feel about That's right. that? Well, uh, Japan, if you're going down the, down the bottom line. So Japan, martial arts people's mind is a little different than the normal people. They have so many good things, but they don't use that things to the today award. That's called onko teaching. Visiting all the systems to learn new things. Martial arts have so many good things today, but they don't use them. Like, uh, for example, Tongfa. We call it PR24. Right. Person may use it, 
but Japan, nobody use it. Good thing, keep there, but nobody know how to use it. So that today, the police department. So I started doing this. I turned the introduction to the every country, all the personnel they study. What do you think is wrong with martial arts today? I think there are ego development. How how do we is fix it, that? Is, I don't know. I'm trying to find out myself right now, but I don't know. I might have some ego, but it's not ego. I'm, I'm proud of it. So I don't do anything. People should not do these things. I think before I do. Hmm. Some people just open their mouth. What do you think the best uh, change, the biggest improvement in martial arts has been in your lifetime? Well, in the martial arts said, if you know yourself and if you know other people, you have very chance to win. But if you don't know yourself, you don't know other people, 50-50, never know. That's why the way I learn. Before I do, make sure I know the other people. I know them myself, how much I can say, how much I can do it. But I don't make, sell myself big things. To me, I'm a good guy, a bad guy. I don't decide myself. Other people decide. Mm -hmm. That's why I learn. What does it mean to be a martial artist? Well, martial art is basically self-defense. But I think last 50 years I studied self-defense, but I think more important to call, call Budo, Budo Bushido, is a, a development as better human beings that come first. They have a strong mind and then strong body. Then you can be good martial artist. That's what I figure. Was there anyone, any martial artist that you wanted to work with that you didn't get the chance to? Yeah. And if anybody uh, better than uh, my mind, I want to go over there. I ask them, can you teach me? I run. Hmm. Do you like martial arts movies? Uh, sometimes, sometimes people overdo advertisement, overdo. Hmm. But sometimes I see a real good one. Uh, I like to watch it because I, I study. What is the job of a martial arts instructor? Well, uh, I concentrate on to more young people because young people have a next generation continue from a my generation. So if we don't teach them, then martial arts go down. Mm. We don't want to go down. We want to go up. So that means I have to teach young people. They bring them up more better better way to do martial art. So right, right now, for example, I have uh, over 50 years with me. Lots of people over 50 years with me. Stay with me. They're training every day. Wow. So that's important to me. Not one year, two years, and goodbye. And how do you keep people uh, engaged, excited about martial arts for so long? Uh, I'm not sure, but I watched his life and uh, uh, direction. I, I keep the direction and uh, keep interesting the way I had to do that.
sometimes costs a lot of money for me. Like uh, one guy said uh, he don't have any money, but he want to buy the car. But he don't have any money to loan the bank. They don't give it to him. So buy the cheap car, and uh, I give you money. And uh, when you have time, just pay me back. You don't have to pay the interest or anything. Just pay me back. No contract, anything. I just give it to him. So this way, he trusts me. Mm. And uh, if he don't have to pay, he, he won't. I lost. But I'm pretty sure most people, they don't have that kind of mind. They will pay. That's my what it is. That's what I want to teach them, how to pay. Then after pay, that's your car. The next time, it's for this whole car for down payment, buy a more better car. That's what little by little, you have to save money, you do that. So I teach them how to do it. Because these people, they never learn. Parents doesn't teach them. That's the big problem in this country. Management to money. So little things. Even not karate, but I teach them his life. And other people listen to me, they learn also the same time. Hmm. Sometimes older than me, I yell them up, say that, oh, you're stupid, you should not do that. But he knows he did the mistake. So, but he never fight me. Right. So he learned. So that's why karate instructor is not just a punching, kicking, teaching him. It's all other parts you have to be teach and you have to discipline yourself. Has the way you teach changed over the years? Uh, first time, 1965 and the 68. But now, yes, I change a little bit. What's different? I make more because I speak more English. So I can make a little joke about it. <laughs> and then uh, see, uh, what I teach, I don't teach like a mechanic. Okay. First time, exercise. Same exercise. Then basics, kata. Starting, done, finish. Not that's what I teach. I teach the uh, exercise that I do every day. I change it, make interesting the uh, way. I don't mean students know exactly what, what I do next. That's no good. Make doesn't know. So this way, students are more interesting. Mm-hmm. That's why I teach. I was in Japan, big problem. Japan exactly uh, teach kata and uh, basics and uh, kumite. Every day, same thing, over and over and over, which is good. But students know what to come next. So take take the easy way. For example, we had to make the circle and everybody can punch it. So he had to think and or oh, 20 people, there are 200 punches, so I go to slow down a little bit. Then can make 200. I don't do that. I do sometimes punch, hard punch, 20 times. Then next day, I punch, same hard punch, 50 times. Next day, hard punch, 100 times. Then people thinking, oh, I got 100 times. Then next time, I do 10 times. Okay, that's enough. And I say, that's it. I just, I should, you know, I should put power. See, that keep make interesting the, in instruction. That's what I teach. Hmm. Which do you love more, teaching or being a student? Well, I I like teaching right now because I can move too much. So uh, right now only I can teach. But the teaching is very hard, but very interesting, especially to children. Do you like teaching children more than adults? Yeah, children are more pure. Are they? Do you think they're easier to um, raise into good martial artists because they haven't been uh, contaminated? Yeah, well, a lot of kids. They listen to me more than parents. There's a lot of responsibility in that. I've heard other instructors yeah. say the same. Yeah. For example, one mother come and say, 
my boy doesn't take shower. I don't know how to do it. I tell him so many times that he don't take shower. So one day he come up here. Hey, so and so and so, you stink. You better take shower. <laughs> oh, okay. And he takes shower. The mother is happier. So kids is always whoever trusts them, they listen to you. Mm. So when, and when I, every place I go, first thing I make kid and me. I have to be close together. So I before I start class, I make a joke. Uh, it's, it's not a joke. I say, listen to me what I told you. Okay, stand up. Sit down. Stand up. You get too slow. Sit down. Fast. Get up. Down. Up and down. Then up. Then next one, people think it's a dance. I say, up. They're able to sit down. The people are laughing. So this way, Come across here, says to me, okay, let's go start class. That's where I start. The kids love that. Mm -hmm. Not too many adult people can teach kids. Some people, no patience. Is it just patience, or is there something else that people need to teach children? Well, they need it. They need it. They Every kid, they're looking for direction. But I can give every. So only I know close to me. Come to the dojo, I can help. But otherwise, I can't help them. For example, uh, one kid, kid in the first belt, from white belt to the kara belt, first belt is very, very important, more than the Big money. So the you know, one father come up and uh, we had to buy the belt. Cost me five dollars. He said, "No, my son don't need a belt." I said, "You gotta be kidding! Five dollars? You one drink, coffee drink? It's gone. You drink coffee? Why don't you save one cup of coffee? Quit. Give it to kids. Don't be so stupid, you stupid father." So he. He realized he paralyzed me. See, that kind of parent, we have too many. Mm. So that's, that's the way I teach them. Is there anything that people think about you? Are there any... Um... What would you like people to think about you and your contributions to the martial arts? Well, put it that way. I'm not sure. I don't do that reason. I just do my job, what I need to do as karate instructor. That I do. So then later they come up, that's a different story. I, I don't mean that way, trying to make that kind of way I do no, I just do it natural. What would you hope happens with martial arts in the next 50 years? I hope people have a more loyalty and uh, uh, study what is Art. Art has no retirement. Like a sky. You don't know how far you can go. Nobody knows how far you can reach them. Same thing. Art doesn't work. Only art is a, that's not for me. That's the end of the limit. So to me, I had to, to go till I die. I had to just do, stay martial art. Some people say I'm retired. That's the end of it. So I'm not retired. Uh, I sometimes joking about I retired, but I still work in seven days a week, and I still travel in different places, different people. I meet people and uh, uh, help people. For example, I just come back from Utah. One little girl has been born the wrong way. She needs a medicine, but her parents don't have any money. So I did a, a real Miyagi to the show of charging money, and all that money goes to her 
Nelson. I give it to him. So that's that's for me. For all, I told him this is the all for martial art people. They donate to you. So that's why I want you to keep up the appreciate it or other martial art people. So they understand. So that's why I start teaching them. Do you think you'll ever retire? So Sorry. Huh? Do you think you will yeah. retire? I don't think nobody let me do it. <laughs> if I retire, I'm, I'm, I'm dead. I think many martial artists would say the same. Uh, many yeah. of the older martial artists I know say the same, that they they can't stop. It's who they yeah. are. Yeah, they love it. So. Yeah. I have just one more question for you. Okay. We have a lot of people listening. What advice would you give to them? Well, uh, whatever you do, do your best. That's my thing. Don't think the money. You don't pay so we are a lousy job. You pay a lot of money, good job. No, doesn't matter what it is, you have to do a good job. I don't mean, my philosophy is that don't pour the money. Money come with you. That's the number one. Number two, don't forget the beginning. Beginning, that's very important. Number three, uh, number three is a, who is it? Oh, uh, don't give up. If you give up, doesn't matter what you do, nothing to do. If you start doing that, continue to do it. And uh, you have to take care of parents because one of the day, you turn come up. So that's the things I want your people to remember, and that's part of a martial art. Well, wonderful advice. Sensei, I really, really appreciate your time. Thank you for talking to me today. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Mm, bye-bye. Bye-bye. I can honestly say that speaking with Sensei as a martial artist has changed my life. And I hope that you gain some insight or at least some enjoyment from listening to our conversation. We release episodes twice a week here at Martial Arts Radio, an interview on Mondays and a topic show on Thursdays. You can find all of our episodes at WhistlekickMartialArtsRadio.com. You can follow us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, YouTube, and Instagram. The username is always Whistlekick. If you want to know what's going on behind the scenes of the show, check out our sort of secret Facebook group, Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio Behind the Scenes. We're always open to new guests for the show, so if you want to throw your hat in the ring, or perhaps your instructor or someone else, head on over to the website, WhistlekickMartialArtsRadio.com, and fill out the form we have there. If you have any feedback, we'd love to hear that too, and you can also send that to us on the website. If you like the show, please make sure you're subscribing. You know, we're always asking for those reviews because they help us spread the word about the show, move us up in the rankings, and that helps new people find us. If you like what we're doing, this is the best way to help. Remember the products you can find at whistlekick.com, like our great sparring gear. That's all for now. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.